I bought myself a set of Legos specifically to answer one question. And that is, if I cast a Lego piece, will the cast piece fit with the original Lego parts? Because one of the most amazing things to me about Legos is how precisely they fit together. There's something satisfying about playing with them because they really do fit together amazingly well. And think about the engineering it takes to make pieces that are that uniform. They just fit so perfectly together. You can build big giant things out of them and they have to hold together, but they also have to be able to be taken apart by a kid. We're gonna cast up our own little bootleg Legos and see if they fit. I made a selection of Lego bricks. These are just the basic Lego bricks. Lay them out, figure out what kind of a mold box we're gonna need. All right, there's our first corner. Two inches is gonna do us. And then it's just how big a box do we wanna build? Gotta remember I'm gonna need a hinge area up in here. Something on the order of that, that look good to you? So what are we talking here? I think seven inches is gonna be just fine. All right, let's go cut some wood over at the table saw. The box is all cut out. Time to break out the beeswax. I totally cooked the brush. Look at that. Look how ridiculous that is. <laughs> oh well, good thing these things are cheap. Got the box made nicely. I'm just gonna go super simple this time and just use a couple of clamps to hold the whole thing together. The next step is to break out the secret weapon and get these pieces mounted into the box. Here's the secret weapon, double stick mounting tape. All right, let's see how this stuff works. Put it on like that. Trim it off. And there's gotta be this protective covering on it, which I will peel in a minute. Let's do the other side. Okay. And now we'll just, I got it started. Let's just peel it. That just peels off. So now we want to lay these out. Oh boy, it grabs. I'm going to lay them out really gently because boy, does it grab. Holy moly. Hope this stuff, <laughs> I hope this stuff will let go when the time comes for it to let go. Because boy, I tell you what, they are on there. Oh well, every day is an experiment, right? Every one of these is an, oh jeez, Louise. Every day is an experiment. Well, let's try. I was gonna pound those on there, but now I'm not gonna. So I'll just put on the end here. Now we can put on the sides. I'm worried that these are gonna be stuck on so tight by this tape. Man, that tape is some kind of serious mounting tape. Maybe I should have used a less industrial strength tape. But boy, I'm gonna have to pry those out of there. I'm a little worried about that. In previous videos, you've seen me use sticky wax to hold the parts down. And now you know why I'm such a fan of sticky wax. Anytime I get involved with some other kind of adhesive, like, like hot milk glue or this tape, I don't know how it's gonna perform, so we are deep in the land of the unknown. Get the rubber mixed up. Let's fire up the vacuum. As is always the routine, we pour from the bottom up and make sure that we don't trap any bubbles down inside between those bricks. And then when we get to the top of the bricks, we wanna make sure that the rubber just flows around all the surfaces, all the landscape, so that it doesn't, uh, uh, can't, just can't trap bubbles in the creases. It's always sharp corners, sharp points, angles, places like that is where bubbles really wanna get caught. This side of the mold is easy. The next side of the mold is gonna be where all the fun starts. Okay, let's pop this mold open. Here, the wax is doing its job perfectly. Okay, popped it all apart. Okay, comes apart. We'll see, now it, this, I knew the case would come apart with no problem, but the question is, what is going on? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man, that rubber is bonded to that tape. And I went and got a tool, this rounded, I have a putty knife with rounded corners so I won't gouge the silicone. And I just need to work it down in here. The amazing thing is that the tape is bonded more tightly to the silicone than it is to the laminate of the case, but any chance of not dislodging the Lego pieces from the first half of the mold is gone. I mean, they're just, they're already <laughs> pretty much separated. So we'll just have to hope that 
when I pour the second half, the rubber doesn't leak down between the Lego piece and the mold. Wow, that tape is really bonded to the rubber. That's somewhat surprising. I had hoped that silicone would work its magic powers and uh, <laughs> resist the tape, but no such luck. And now we can just go through and clean up the mold, get all the little bits and pieces off it. Okay, the box is all laid out and ready to assemble, but I need to spray it with partying agent and I'm just gonna use some MR150 from Silpak, works great. And the uh, thing is, I don't want it everywhere. I don't want a heavy coat. I just want a nice, even, thin coat of parting agent over the whole thing. Remember, I want this part right here to be a hinge. So this little piece of blue painter's tape will block the spray release from getting on that part of the rubber. And where I block the release, the bottom half of the mold and the top half of the mold should bond together. To pour the second half of the mold, I'm gonna have to use uh, a different technique, one that I probably have not shown you so far on the channel. The problem are these tiny, tiny little holes all throughout. So the trick is to drizzle the rubber in a really thin, thin, thin stream so there's no danger of blocking the opening of any of the holes. The moment you block the opening of the hole, you're gonna catch a bubble underneath it. The rubber just can't get in there. There's too much surface tension and the rubber just can't get in there and the air won't get out. So this technique that I'm using here it's kind of like I'm scaling the pour to the size of the parts. Instead of pouring a lot, which you would pour in a big mold, I'm pouring a tiny amount to fill these little teeny tiny pockets. It usually works really well. So this, this is what I mean when I say put the craft where it matters. This is where craftsmanship and mold making really matters. Okay, the mold is poured. It all looks pretty good. I'm optimistic. It's now the following day and this thing is ready to pull apart. Let's do it. Let's see, is this gonna fight me? No, do, how much do we love beeswax? Oh, remind me to make a donation to the National Beeswax Association of America because that is so beautiful. Now, hold on, hold on. This was the H end, my hinge end, I marked it. So here, if this comes apart, I'm gonna cry and it's bonded beautifully. On the other hand, this better come apart. Oh, there we go. Now, <sighs> okay, kids, let's pull it. Oh, it looks like it's gonna come out. Come on, come on, come on, baby babies. Come on, little babies. Come on, little babies, come on out. Come on, little baby, come on out. Oh, oh. Oh, so nice. Oh, so nice. Let's get that last one. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can't pop these out of here. Let's work them out, work them out, work them out, work them out, work them out. Work them out. Come on. Ooh. This mold is 100% flawless. You see that? Look at that. This is what I mean when I talk about put the craft where it counts. Nowhere in these pieces is there so much as a bubble. Now, question, will they cast? That's another big question. But the mold is absolutely flawless. I need to cut this hinge now because it's a little close to this one mold here. So that's no good. So let's just take a little bit of knifeage. I definitely don't want to cut it free. I want to leave the two pieces of the mold attached. But that should give me enough clearance there. Yeah and that'll fold back neatly. Can already hear the howls of protest. Here we go. You're right, I should have gloves on because I might get resin on my hands here. I don't ever get resin on my hands. Don't allow it. But when you do things like this, you might. Safety first. Let's get some ease release going here. And I'm gonna put some, a light shot of ease release on these parts because these are really hard to release. So let me see if I can kind of spread them open. Give them the lightest possible coat on these parts because I don't want them to be dimensionally different. These are the side pieces that are gonna hold on our registration. All right, let's go get some res mixed. That resin is nice and mixed. Fill these cavities first. Here we go, here we go, and we go.
All right, into the pot it goes. Quick check of the witness cup. Let's go. Ready to go. Thrills and chills. How'd we do? Now, remember, I also ease release these parts. And yeah, that ease release is doing its job. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say, they mostly filled, and I think I see one that's partially filled. Let's pull them. You just want to pull them out nice and slow. You got to get air in there. But boy, there's so much landscape inside of these little parts. It makes them a real challenge to pull. Ideally, you want to pull them out straight out, but you got to get air in there. You don't want to badly warp the parts pulling them out. I'm letting them cure a pretty good long time in the mold because I want them to be strong enough to demold, otherwise they'll just really badly warp. The downside to that is that it hurts the mold. The longer the resin sits in the mold, the more it hurts the mold. So there's a trade-off for everything in this resin casting thing. Trade-offs everywhere you look. Let's see if I can pull them out like that. So it's also, partially, it's just about getting a technique that works with the parts that you're demolding. Getting my thumb in there, and that seems to be helping to leverage the pieces out. All right. What do we got? What do we got? Let's get in close and take a look. Uh, the flaws that I caught in these was I starved the mold a little bit. I kind of realized it after I poured it. I mixed exactly the amount of weight I needed to cast these pieces and that didn't work. I need to overfill this mold and let it leak out. That way I know that I'm not gonna catch flaws like this, which is a cavity. Okay, so the orange pieces and the yellow pieces are mine, and the other pieces are existing Legos. So let's see how they do. This orange one pops right on. Again, we have some registration issues, and that's more about this mold. Even a big piece connects to my new piece. That's pretty nice. Put on a yellow piece, and this piece, that piece, those are my pieces. This orange one is one of my pieces. And lo and behold, everything is fitting together. You can see the problems if you can get in close enough. There are little tiny gaps, normal situation. That much of a mold alignment would not be a problem. You'd clean that right off in a sculpt. In this casting situation, you need absolutely perfect alignment between the inner and the outer molds. I do like the way my yellow parts, which I cast, they also fit together. Here's a perfect example of not perfect alignment. That's the, that's, and you can see the imperfections of alignment. The point of this video is to answer the question, can I cast Lego parts and make them fit with other Lego parts? And the answer we have determined is yes, we can. The, sh the, the coefficient of shrinkage in the rubber and in this particular urethane resin holds enough accuracy that these pieces fit together. First molds are great teachers because they tell you everything you did wrong and uh, <laughs> everything you need to improve. So what I would say about this mold is the actual molding process that I used was flawless. This, this mold, every one of these are absolutely flawless. Like, like this piece is very, very good. Even the fine little webbing and the details and everything, not a bubble in sight and it's perfect but it's not as precise as a real Lego. And the reason it's not quite as precise as a real Lego is, if I was gonna remake this mold, I'd make it wider, a bigger landing, I'd put lots of registration keys into the mold so that when it fell together, it just, it, it was held together more firmly. Truth of the matter is, you know, I was going to do that on this piece, but I, but I decided to save myself the labor because in all honesty, I did not think that the parts were gonna fit. Uh, I had very, very low expectation that this will work. What I think this is exciting about and what's fun about this is that knowing that you can cast parts, like you could make sculptures using the original Lego pieces. You can make a sculpture and then cast it in rubber and be reasonably confident that that part is going to match and fit with a Lego set. So that just opens up a whole world of possibilities for sculpting and creating your own Lego compatible parts. Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had a good time. I'll see you next week.